I don't tend to review Linux distros, but when I do, you know it's going to be a weird one. And OpenKylin is exactly that. Not to be confused with other distros with Kylin in their name, like Kylin. This is a completely separate system. It is a proprietary OS from 2001 developed by China's National University of Defense Technology. It initially started with a free BSD base for government and military use, eventually shifting over to a Linux base and becoming Neo Kylin. Also not to be confused with Ubuntu Kylin, which is an official Ubuntu flavor developed as a partnership between Canonical and China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. This is generally described as a loose continuation of the original Kylin project. But Open Kylin is a completely different system that a lot of mainstream outlets are completely misreporting on. Reuters, China releases its first open source computer operating system, and then other outlets like Yahoo literally just reposted the exact same article. China releases its first open source computer operating system, and then other outlets are saying basically the exact same thing. Most of this title is accurate, except this part. It's not the first. It is open source, it is a computer operating system, but Deepin has been around since 2004. That's not what makes OpenKylin so interesting. No, what makes it so interesting is it's an independent Linux distro. Deepin is based on Debian, and Ubuntu Kylin, as the name would suggest, is based on Ubuntu. This is not. This is its own separate thing. At least it claims to be. I'll get into that in just a bit. Before that, the install process. Now, I wouldn't normally care to show it, but I think in this case it is justified. So I'll leave a link to the website in the description down below. I really don't recommend you run this, but if you want to, go and grab it. So on the downloads page, we have the x86 version, the RISC-V version, and the ARM version. There is an installation guide, um, but unless you know Chinese, it's not going to get you very far because it's in Chinese. But there's nothing that special about it. It's just an ISO, so it should be pretty easy to work out. Don't download it from this page though. Go and download it from a mirror, unless you live near China, because it might take a year to download. There are mirrors in Denmark and Sweden. They are considerably faster. So stick it in a VM, stick it on a USB, you know what to do with an ISO, and you'll be presented with this, which, you know, is gonna be a bit of a problem. As we established, I don't know Chinese. Luckily, there is a little bit of English, but this is for the older LTS kernel. You can go and use that if you want to, but that's not what we're going to go with. You notice next to some of these options, they have a letter. T is for try, I is for install. Let's go and select that one and give it a bit of time to boot. In the try version, Everything is in Chinese, and I have no idea if there's an option to swap it. During the install version though, we can select the English installer, and this swaps everything over to something I can read. And the installer is actually like, really, really straightforward, even more straightforward than something like Ubuntu. For some reason, uh, we can't actually move this map around, so I can't select Australia. So we'll just select something with a roughly similar time zone? Uh, I, I guess that's fine. I don't know why Australia is not here. Maybe they just don't like us. Next, now we select our username. I'm gonna go with Brody, select a password, use one that is totally secure because you're definitely not gonna have everything leaked about this system. We can also select automatic login on boot, which is, you know, nice to have. Keep in mind, if you're gonna do this in a virtual machine, which I highly recommend you do, you need to give it at least a 20 gigabyte hard drive, otherwise it will not let you install it. You have the option of a full install that it does all automatically, or a custom install where you can choose how things are gonna be partitioned. I don't really care to do that, so I'm just gonna go with the full install and click next, select format of the whole disk and start installation. And that is all. That's literally all you need to do. And during the install process, it's gonna show you these little fun graphics here. One of them, this one, I noticed kind of looks like Ethereum. I don't know what any of these graphics say because they're all in Chinese, but I'll swap back to that system that is already installed. Upon booting your newly installed spyware, you'll be presented with this grub screen, which has a grub theme. I don't think it's a great grub theme. I think it looks completely out of place compared to the rest of the system, 
But it is here nonetheless. Selecting open Kylin GNU Linux is going to boot it. You do get this nice splash screen graphic. You see this when you're going through the installer as well. I actually kind of like it. It's like a nice little thing to see as you boot. Also, there is going to be this nice little uh, tune as well. This is a thing I said sometimes happens. Sometimes it just forgets to open up the display manager, which might be a virtual machine thing, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like it has a nice ring to it. This makes use of a desktop you've probably never seen before, but it does kind of wear its inspiration on its sleeve. Like, really, really heavily. This is a desktop called UKUI, the Ultimate Kylan User Interface, which I think is a great name, and is the exact same desktop used on Ubuntu Kylan. It was developed as a partnership between the National University of Defense Technology, Canonical, and Kylansoft. It is a fork of Mate. Now, it's such a fork of Mate that some of the applications in here are just Mate applications, like the terminal. If you've used Mate before, this is the Mate terminal, and there are random other things in here that are just Mate applications as well. That's not a bad thing. I don't really care about it, but it's a Mate desktop that also heavily uses Qt. Now, Mate uses GTK, so it's this weird mixture of Qt applications and GTK applications, which I don't understand. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Now, for some reason, it's not in the bar by default, but it ships Firefox as the standard web browser. I don't have a problem with that. It's just Firefox. Now, is it just Firefox and not some additional patches I don't know about? That I cannot confirm, but it is certainly Firefox, and I don't know which website this is trying to send me to. I guess this is some Chinese search engine and news site? I don't know what this is. Last time I opened the browser, this didn't happen. Now, it also ships an Office Suite. It's not LibreOffice, it's not OpenOffice, it's WPS Office, which should be kind of expected as WPS Office is a Chinese developed project. Also, there are those rumors that maybe certain phrases were leading to files getting audio encrypted and deleted. You know, these were never confirmed, but it kind of makes sense that a Chinese system is gonna use WPS Office. Also, as should be expected, it does ship an input method editor, that being FCITX. This is an application that converts your alphabet key presses into the respective Chinese characters. Now, in the English version, it is not enabled by default, but in the Chinese version, if you press control and space, it will start doing that conversion for you. Now, considering this is supposedly an independent distro, what is it using to handle its software delivery? Well, one thing it does have is a software store. Now, much of what's on here, you're probably not gonna recognize, but there are some things in here that, you know, you probably have seen before, like it was in here just before, where did it go? Hey, look, Pulse Effects. That's not the one I was looking for. I was actually looking for Caden Live, right there. So you will find regular applications you've probably messed with before. That's not the only thing it has. It also has a package manager. What package manager, you might ask? Well, it has apt. Apt is here. Okay, so it's not totally independent, but you can still have an independent distro that is using an established package manager. Don't worry, we will get to that. It's just some random other things along the way. Down here, we have a virtual keyboard. So clearly this is made to work on mobile devices as well. I don't really care to use it, but there's not really any way I've seen to hide it. So it's just always there. Also, there's this really weird weather app, which only supports Chinese cities. Searching for anything outside of China is not gonna get you anything of use, like at all. But then there's also this VPN button. You can just go and configure a VPN with this, which for a Chinese market focused distro seems like a really weird addition. But my very favorite application is the code editor. This is called Kylan Code. Now, you're going to recognize the application, but I'm not really gonna be sure why you recognize it. Hmm, what could this possibly be? I don't know. 
For anyone who doesn't understand humour, this is obviously just a rebrand fork of VS Code. There doesn't seem to be anything else different about it. And as everyone needs to do in a distro review, let's have a look at the theming. Inside the settings, go to personalised, and from here we can go and select one of the default wallpapers. My personal favourite is this giraffe. Why is there a giraffe? I don't know, but I like it. The other ones, you know, they all look kind of nice, you know, screen and all. I don't care about default wallpapers, I'm just going to pick something else. But there is one thing you might want to change, from light to dark. And now, when we open up a terminal, it isn't blindingly white. You can change the accent core law, not color, core law, very important difference. There are some icon themes pre-installed, there are some different cursor themes installed. They all look great in their own right, but let's get into the weird part. The default petitioning scheme makes literally zero sense. So we have our SDA drive here. This is broken into three petitions. So we have our boot. This is given one gigabyte, which is a fairly small boot, but is totally acceptable. The system is working just fine with that size. Then there is SDA2. This is a one kilobyte petition and is not mounted. I don't know why this exists. I have no possible idea what you could do with an unmounted one kilobyte petition. And then three and four are skipped. And then five is where the root is. I didn't know you could even skip petition numbers. I thought they always had to be sequential. Also, there's no swap petition. There's no swap file either. So there's just no swap, which I know some people just don't really care about. Personally, I do like having swap there though. For some unexplainable reason, random tools like less are just missing. Why? I, I don't know, if someone can work that one out, please tell me. So what about this being an independent distro? Well, we can very easily confirm it's not pulling from Ubuntu servers. If we go and do cat on the sources list, it is pulling from archive.build.openkylan.top. This is OpenKylan's own servers. But do you remember when Huawei came out and said, we made a completely independent mobile OS that was called Harmony OS. And it was found out very quickly. It was literally just an Android skin that they called their own separate thing. Would you be surprised if I told you this was basically just Ubuntu? Here is one of the grub configuration files. If we do a search for Ubuntu, Ubuntu slash Kubuntu. Ubuntu recovery, Ubuntu recovery, and a variable called Ubuntu recovery. And there is another file that has the exact same thing. If we do a search for Ubuntu, Ubuntu recovery, Ubuntu slash Kubuntu, Ubuntu recovery, Ubuntu, 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 Ubuntu recovery. And I'm sure if you did a bit more digging, you could probably find random other config files as well. Over on the register, they found the GCC build made use of a bunch of Ubuntu flags. For the record, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. The problem is when you do this and then say you have an independent distro. It's not independent, it's just Ubuntu. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libera Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... One, two, and bing, chilling.